Hi, this video is to show teachers how to create an interactive activity within the Keynote app on your MacBook. Specifically, how to create a drag and drop activity like I have here on the screen. And drag and drop simply means this is how your students are going to complete the activity. Instead of maybe writing or texting or, or drawing or marking up, they will simply drag their responses. All right, so let's get started and show you how to create an interactive activity. So you'll get into your Keynote app on your Mac. You're gonna to go to File, New. You're gonna select one of these themes or templates. I'm gonna go ahead and select this one. What'll happen is it's always gonna put the title slide up. Well, this isn't gonna meet my needs for the way I wanna design this activity. So I'm gonna go up to Add Slide, and I'm gonna select one of these. If you just wanted a picture, you would do the photo. I want this one right here because I want some text, but I also want space to make my activity. So now I'm gonna click kind of in this box, and now you'll see the blue editing line is around it. I'm gonna move this up. You'll see this guideline that helps me make sure I'm centered. I have it where I want it. Now I'm gonna double tap inside it, change the text. And if you come up over here to the right, you'll see format. This is the most important thing when you are creating anything in any of the Apple applications on your Mac. Format is what does the editing. So whether you're in Keynote pages or numbers, it's going to work exactly the same. So format will let you change things. So now you'll see I've got this highlighted here and I want to maybe change the text. I can come over here and select the text size, font, color, if I want it centered, all those good things. Style will change the color if I want to put a border, etc. So that's how you can be creative and customize things. Now I want to change the background color. So I've clicked in the entire slide and you'll see format comes up and I want to change this color. Let's make it similar to the one I just showed you. Now I've simply changed the color. Now let's get into how I made the shapes to house my letters and that picture of the, the at word family pictures. So I did that by simply inserting shapes. So let's start with the box that I created to house the letters. So you go up to shapes, you get a box here, and now you can customize this box. I'm going to drag it to the size I want it to be. And now I want to change this style, right? So I'm going to come, the first thing I'm going to do is put a border on this so I can see the border. I'm going to change, you can see, you can change the color of the border, the size, etc. Now the fill, I want this to be clear. So I'm going to go ahead and match the color of my background. And now I have one box. Now what I suggest is you create one box the way exactly how you want it and then you would copy that box to save yourself some time. I would make this one the way I wanted it and then simply copy. So let me show you what I mean. So if I need some lines so that I can put my letters on, I'm going to go up into shape again. This time I'm going to select just a line. I can drag and move it the way I want it. Once I have it the way I want, I'm going to click on that line and you'll see it's got the editing points on it. I'm going to right click and I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to do two more. So I'll do paste, paste. And I've created the lines very quickly for my letters. So now let's go in and see how I put those letters there. So what I'll do is to put any kind of text, you have to go up into the text tab here. And you'll see, I can drag this to where I want it. And again, I can come over to text and I know I want this to be bigger. Okay, that looks like a great size. So what I'm gonna do again is I like this text box, I like the size and the format inside it. I'm gonna copy it and a paste and the T. Then I have the letters the way I want it. I have the box the way I want it. I'm gonna show you a really cool trick to keep everything intact in this box so it doesn't move separately. So I wanna group these, all of these pieces together into one. So you'll see how I have this selected. Now I'm gonna hit shift and everything inside this box, I'm gonna keep my finger on shift and I'm gonna shift down on all of the shapes, all of the letters. And now come over to the right again under format, but this time select arrange. And I'm gonna group these. So now they move together as one shape. So I have this box the way I want it. Now I'm going to copy it two more times 
to make my other boxes. So I'm going to right click again and I'm going to paste these. So now that you have everything exactly the way you want it, what's missing? We need to put an image in here, right? Remember how we have the picture of the hat and the cat and the bat. So how do I do this? How do I get images in here? So if this is something you already have on your Mac, you'd go up to media and you'd select photos and you'd pick something that was living within your camera library here. If it's something that you don't have yet, but it's a picture you want to go get from the web, I'm going to show you how to quickly do a safe Google search. So let's go into Google. And I know that's a popular place to get images, right? So let's go get, and I'll just show you how to do the first one. We'll go ahead and get a picture of a hat here. And so now I'm going to select images. I'm in Google. Now we all as teachers want to make sure that we are complying with copyright laws, right? So let's go ahead. I want to show you how to do that because we don't know if these are free or what the user's policy is on these pictures. So if we go to tools here and we say usage rights, if we select creative commons, we know that these pictures are okay for us to reuse. So now these are the ones that I can reuse. So let's say we want to do this top hat. So we're going to tap on it once. You'll see it here. Now take your two fingers or your right click and you're going to save this image and you can put it wherever you'd like. So you could change it to desktop, wherever you want, want to put it. I'm going to show you what I often do is I just take it and I drag it down here until I see my dock and I see photos and it'll land right into photos. And there it is. So then when I'm ready, I can simply drag this shape right here and it'll insert. You could also, again, now that you know it's in your library, go up to photos and get it out of your library. Now let's go ahead. We want the shape to be piece of this one group. Go ahead and I am going to select shift and I'm going to go to arrange and I am going to group this. And now the last piece of this piece that you have created as the teacher, not where the kids are going to drag, but you want these to be static and not move, right? So you're going to lock this. So once you have all the pieces together, you will go here and select this that you now that you've grouped it, you can just select lock under the arrange tab and lock. I'd also suggest locking your title here and that way the kids cannot move any of this. All right, so we have one more step. So in the bottom here where we put the letters for the students to pick and to drag, we just need another shape. So you would simply go in, get your shape here, drag it to the size you want. And I am going to format this. I want to change the style. I want to change the color to a white background. And now I'm ready to put my letters in. When you put your letters in, and again, you'll do that through a text box. And again, you can copy all of these. And then all you, all you have to simply do to change it is just change the letters that you need. So if I need this H to be a C, I would just go in and change that, etc. So these you don't want to move, right? You don't want to lock these down. You don't want to lock these letters down, but you want to lock this box. So we'll go ahead in this box and go back to arrange. And you guys know how to do this now and you lock this, but the letters are freestanding and moving. So now you have learned you guys how to make an interactive activity. What you will do is you will save this whole activity. And if you want to upload this like to canvas, you need the students to be able to manipulate this. So you can't export it as a PDF because PDFs don't allow you to drag and drop. You will need this to be a keynote in order for the kids to drag and complete the activity. So you will go up to file and you'll save this. I save mine on my desktop if you want to save it wherever uh, your favorite storage is, but I save it to desktop. And then when I go into Canvas, I simply upload this file right into my activity. Then only other thing that you need to remember is that you need to make sure that you select on your assignment in Canvas that it's a submission of a file upload because your kids will need to upload the file and they will have to have the Keynote app on their iPad. You're ready to go. Thanks for watching.